L'homme de Dieu est en train de prier pour nos visiteurs internationaux, résident au sein de l'Église, venus de différents pays du monde. Ils vont recevoir cette touche de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ, répondant à leurs points de besoin. L'Esprit a commencé à se manifester, des aspects contraires à la présence de Dieu, à l'Esprit de Dieu, en train de se manifester. Recevez aussi, téléspectateurs, là où vous vous trouvez, recevez cette onction, cette puissance de Dieu qui est en train d'ouvrir dans l'Esprit. Et soyez guéris, délivrés et bénis aujourd'hui dans le nom puissant de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. C'est un stick. Un très petit stick. Oui, c'est ça. Vous le normalement le prenez avec vous. Oui, c'est ça. Il est possédé. Oui, c'est ça. Souvent, vous voyez vous êtes parmi les morts. Oui, c'est ça. C'est le spirit des morts. Oui, c'est ça. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So that was how our brother received his deliverance and also a pinpoint word of prophecy. And we want to... We want to listen to him right now. Brother, you're very welcome in Jesus' name. Please introduce yourself to us and share with us more about your life experience and how you can confirm those words of prophecy to be true. Emmanuel, people of God, my name is Mfanfigile. I am here to confirm and to confess the word of prophecy that was uh, given to me by uh, the highly favored man of God, Prophet T.P. Joshua, last Sunday. The man of God gave me two prophecies. The first prophecy, he said that there is a stick that I carry which is possessed, of which I confirm that prophecy to be true. And he also said that uh, I see dead bodies in my dreams uh, and that said I have got a spirit of death of which I also confirm that prophecy to be true. Uh, I, I confirm it to be true. So I, 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 I come from a, a, a family of Sangomas. My grandmother was a Sangoma my mother was also a Sangoma. So growing up in that setup, uh, we were involved uh, uh, in many things that uh, Sangomas do, including the initiation of other Sangomas. And uh, when there are ceremonies for appeasing the ancestors, we were also taking part in those ceremonies. I also have a number of incisions in my body for protection which was done by our parents. So uh, this thing uh, has really affected me because growing up uh, I was a wayward kid. I was okay, so we're, we're ex understanding the experience of our brother. He said that he's from a home of Sangomas, which uh, we know to be spiritualists or witch doctors and he said his grandmother was a sangoma his mother was a sangoma so he was born into this environment and he has incisions marks all over his body as a result of the rituals that were done to him from a young age so brother as you were growing up tell us how this began to affect your lifestyle uh, as I was growing up uh, I at the age of 15 I started uh, taking drugs uh, I started smoking uh, marijuana, I started smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, and uh, later on I started even taking cocaine. So this affected me a lot because whenever I was high on the drugs and drunk with alcohol, where, whenever I come to these places, the social circles in the bars, people just pack their belongings and run away because they know that here is trouble. I, I was a person with a lot of anger and I was causing trouble. I was fighting people, uh, no matter how many you are, I will fight you. Whether I am getting hurt, I wouldn't really care. And I was not scared even of the cops. I, I, I even uh, fight the cops when they came for me. 
So it, it really affected my life a lot. So under the influence of these drugs, you became very, very violent. Of course, I was a very violent person. Okay. Could you tell us, give us an example of how serious was this drug addiction on a daily basis? How much were you taking uh, during this period? Uh, the addiction was too much because, as I said, I started uh, taking the drugs at age 15. So I was addicted for 25 years because now I'm 40. So uh, I, I, I would take about 10 joints a day, every day. So it was affecting me because whenever I'm high, I, I, I become angry and nobody would like to be next to me. So people of God, we understand the severity of the addiction. Our brother's talking about 10 joints of marijuana every single day, in addition to taking alcohol, cigarettes, and it graduated to the point of taking cocaine as well, these hard drugs. So tell us, from this point forward, brother, how did this uh, addiction now graduate into a worse, uh, a worse situation? As time uh, went by, I then started uh, engaging into uh, farming marijuana uh, with my friends and with some of my brothers, and we also smuggled it to other countries uh, where we have secured a market. So, but still, all these problems which we were trying to solve with the illegal business, they were not. Because the money I would receive from the sale of the trucks, I would use it recklessly and I wouldn't know what I have done with that money. So, that is when, when the problems escalated even to my family. We, 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 we were fighting always, there were problems broken relationships in the family, financial problems, yet we are working. So then we decided that we approached Sangoma to cleanse our home from all these things. So the Sangoma came to our home, he did the ritual, he cleansed the home, and he invited me to his place to further complete the process. So when I, get to it, when I got to his place, then that is when he, I, 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 I actually told him that I am engaged in this business of uh, uh, smuggling drugs outside the country. So he, pro he, he, he then said he has a solution that will help me so that the cops, the police will not catch my, my daha when I'm transporting it and so that when the buyers, when I reach the buyers, they will pay handsomely for our consignment. So that is when he gave me the stick, which he said I must use, I must put in the bag when transporting the marijuana. So it will protect us on the way from the police, and also the buyers will pay us handsomely. And really, I was shocked when the man of God prophesied about the stick, because nobody knew about it, even in my family, except for my younger brother. So it was shocking, honestly. That's not loud enough. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. I hope we understand what our brother is saying. He said that he went to a Sangoma at the time. The problems in the family were so much that so he went to this witch doctor who invited him to the shrine. And there when he told the witch doctor that he was engaging in the illicit business of drug trafficking uh, and he was having some challenges, that witch doctor actually gave him a stick and told him that any time the drugs are being taken abroad, he should place that stick within the luggage. And as a result of that, it would have easy passage, it would not be caught by the police, and it would reach its destination. So when he came to the synagogue church of all nations, prophet T.B. Joshua immediately prophesied to him that he sees a stick which is possessed. And our brother is saying that he did not tell anyone about this stick. No one, even in his family, aside from his brother, knew about this stick that was given to him by the Sangoma. And that was how Jesus Christ went straight to this through the prophetic word and spoke about this. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So brother, continue with your explanation. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we continued with the trade, with smuggling the, 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 the Maria Joanna, but the problems, they never ceased. Instead, they escalated. So then a friend of mine at work, he, 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 she introduced me to Emmanuel TV. So when I was watching Emmanuel TV, I was shocked that uh, 
there is someone with uh, uh, such uh, anointing that he can deliver people from the same problems that I was facing and the same problems that we are facing as a family. So that is when I decided that, no, I should come to the synagogue Church of All Nations for deliverance. And you can be surprised that even before I came here, the day before I was taking the marijuana, and I was thinking about bringing some, yeah, because, <laughs> yes. So that is how I came to the synagogue Church of All Nations. And when the man of God, during the Sunday service, when he touched me, uh, I don't know what happened, I, I just found myself on the floor, and when I rose up, I, I felt a calmness I cannot explain inside me, and there was so much peace that I knew that I am delivered, and I knew that my family has been delivered, and the devil has been shamed. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Now, to the glory of God, we want to quickly replay what happened to our brother last week when he received that touch and that word of prophecy, and thereafter we'll listen to the changes in his life. So let's watch our screen again and see exactly what happened. We here are waiting to receive that same touch from heaven through the prophetic word from Jesus Christ in the life of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Let's watch it again right now. Réside au sein de l'église, venu de différents pays du monde. Il va recevoir cette touche de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Répondant à leurs points de besoin, l'esprit a commencé à se manifester, des aspects contraires à la présence de Dieu, à l'esprit de Dieu, est en train de se manifester. Recevez aussi, téléspectateurs, là où vous vous trouvez, recevez cette onction, cette puissance de Dieu qui est en train de vous dans l'esprit. Et soyez guéri, délivré et béni aujourd'hui dans le nom puissant de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. C'est un stick. Yes, Very small sir. stick like this. Yes, sir. You normally take it along. Yes, sir. And it's possessed. Yes, sir. Mm. Sometimes you see yourself among the dead. Yes, sir. That's the spirit of dead. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ one more time. So, brother, ever since that touch from Jesus last week, tell us the changes you have seen in your life. There is a lot that has changed, actually. Like the man of God prophesied that in my dreams I see dead uh, bodies. Uh, even the day before the Sunday service last week, uh, in my dream I was with a, a dead body, which I was trying to bury on my own. So, but since then, since the deliverance, I have been sleeping peacefully, no bad dreams, and no craving for the drugs. I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I feel like I'm just a new creature uh, at all. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So, 25 years of drug addiction, disappeared, the urge to take drugs, everything has gone since that touch from Jesus. Ah, it has gone. It has gone. I don't have any craving anymore. Wow. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. And brother, in the light of this encounter, what, what is the decision you want to take now concerning your life? You know, you said before you were engaged in this illicit business. I hope you are now ready to give your life fully to Christ and never return to such activities. I have actually given myself to Christ fully, and I have made Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. That is indeed the greatest miracle, the salvation of our soul. And brother, we'd like to ask you a word of advice to viewers watching right now, especially those who may have a, a similar problem that you once had, and they're watching you right now. What is your advice to them? My word of advice, uh, I, I will take them from uh, the scripture. Uh, one is uh, Matthew 11, verse 28, which says, Come to me, all ye who are uh, uh, heavenly burdened, I will give you rest. And the second one, I will quote it from the book of Hebrews 4, verse 16 which says, therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, for you will receive mercy and grace in time of need. Amen. 
So my advice to people who are facing the same problem which I was facing is that do as I have done, come to the throne of grace, uh, you will receive mercy and grace whenever you are in need and make God the standard for your life. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We can see how a former drug addict, drug trafficker is now the one encouraging us with the word of God, quoting the scripture to really confirm the testimony and deliverance in his life. We thank God for your life, brother. We pray that God will give you the grace to continue to make the word of God the standard for your life. And we know the best is yet to come in Jesus' name. Téléspectateurs, nous venons toujours d'entendre le témoignage de cet homme qui a reçu une parole prophétique du prophète Ivy Joshua disant il y a un bâton, un petit bâton que tu utilises et qui est possédé. Je te vois toujours au milieu des personnes décédées. Il dit que voilà, qu'il vient d'une famille qui était, et même sa grand-mère et sa mère fut des sangomains, c'est-à-dire des guérisseurs traditionnels, ils adoraient des idoles et il dit qu'il participe à plusieurs euh, rituels dès son jeune âge qui affectaient sa vie. Il commença à se droguer à l'âge de 15 ans, il buvait beaucoup de boissons alcoolisées, il fumait de la marijuana, du tabac et il se bagarrait toujours. Il dit qu'il avait même commencé à prendre de la drogue dure comme la de la cocaïne, une addiction de 25 ans qui l'a poussé à être violent, extrêmement violent. Il dit qu'il a même commencé à trafiquer de la drogue à l'étranger, comme de la marijuana, et l'argent qu'il gagnait, il ne pouvait pas se satisfaire, il était toujours en manque d'argent. Il dit que voilà, un sorcier lui offrit un petit bâton afin de le protéger, afin que les policiers ne, ne l'arrêtent pas et ne fouillent point ses valises. Il dit que voilà, à chaque fois qu'il utilisait ce petit bâton, il n'avait pas de problème. Le petit bâton dont le prophète Tibi Joshua avait fait référence, il dit qu'il fut choqué quand le prophète Tibi Joshua lui parla du petit bâton, il dit qu'il euh, a commencé à trafiquer beaucoup de drogue, il dit que à chaque fois qu'il trafiquait sa vie empira et un ami l'a introduit à Emmanuel TV qui l'a encouragé à augmenter sa foi et c'est là qu'il est venu à la synagogue de toutes les nations cherchant la face de Dieu pour mettre fin à sa mauvaise vie, ses mauvaises habitudes il dit que dès que le prophète Ibi Joshua prie à pourri, il dit que voilà il s'est senti comme une personne nouvelle, il dit que l'obsession de se droguer toute mauvaise habitude a disparu, il dit que maintenant il est un nouveau-né et que voilà il n'a plus envie de faire les choses mauvaises dans sa vie, il a donné sa vie à Dieu, lui qui était autrefois un drogué, trafiquant de drogue, maintenant il encourage tout le monde de chercher la face de Dieu tous ceux qui avaient le même problème de, que lui demandent, s'il vous plaît, cherchez la face de Dieu, Dieu vous apportera la délivrance. Escuchamos otro poderoso testimonio y en este caso para comprobar ese poder de liberación en la palabra profética dada por el hombre TV Joshua, el hombre de Dios, el profeta TV Joshua. Este hombre dice que estuvo aquí la semana pasada y recibió una profecía donde el hombre de Dios le dijo que había un, eh, una vara que era pequeña y que él tenía en su posesión y que además había un espíritu de muerte en su vida. Él viene a confirmar esta palabra, ser 100% verdadera porque dice que él creció en una familia que adoraba ídolos, él dice que viene de una familia donde habían brujos y que su madre y su abuela eran brujas y que él también al crecer en esta familia lo hacían partícipes de diferentes sacrificios y rituales a estos ídolos, él dice que desde que él empezó a crecer el deseo por las drogas estaba en él y durante 25 años fue adicto a las drogas, a la marihuana y a la cocaína, dice que tal era su adicción que también empezó a llevar a cabo actividades ilícitas traficando droga junto a su familia. Cuenta que una vez estaban tan mal como familia que fueron a buscar solución en otro brujo y este brujo cuando se enteró que ellos estaban llevando a cabo actividades ilícitas le dijo y le dio una vara y le dijo que cada vez que fuera a traficar droga pusiera esa vara en su maleta y eso le iba a ayudar. Él dice que era tanta la desesperación porque su vida empezó a empeorar cada vez más con esta adicción que decidió venir a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones y el hombre de Dios lo localizó con la palabra profética y a través de esa palabra él quedó libre y hoy dice que no tiene deseo por las drogas ya no lleva a cabo actividades ilícitas y él y su familia están libres en el nombre de Jesús continuamos 